In this tutorial, we're going to cover on how to process a transaction using the online terminal. Now, when you first log into the online terminal, depending on your account setup, there will be some features that will be turned on or off. For example, purchase card level 3. If your account's not set up for this, you will not see this information here at the top. If you are set up for level 3, there is a video covering this information on what is required for you to fill out a transaction for level 3. So we're going to move on to order details. Order details is a section where you can add specific information or line items to create an invoice for your transaction. Now the item number, name, and price, and then click add. Or if you have EPN inventory, by clicking either in the item field or the name field, a drop down will pop up with your whole list of inventory. By typing in a specific name, it will isolate it to that. So we're going to go ahead and move on down. So moving on to the next section really depends on how your account is set up. For this example, we have used an account that has the customer database engine on it. So therefore, customer information appears above the payment information. On a basic online terminal account, this will appear below the payment information. Also, the look up existing customer button only applies to people with the customer database manager. If you're interested in that, please contact your sales office. They can always add this to your account. Now in the customer information section, there is a bunch of information about your customer that is not necessarily required for you to process the transaction. Email address, company name, first name, last name, phone number, none of this information is required. But if you do input an email address, we will send your customer a transaction summary. Also, the more information you put, the more information we'll store with the transaction. Billing address information. Now here on a manual transaction, these fields as such as street address and zip code are required for you to qualify for the address verification system. Now it is not required for you to process the transaction, but if you want the best rates possible, you need to put this information. For example, the street number is sufficient. You don't have to have the complete street information and the zip code. Now if you need more information about rates than that that apply to the address verification system, please contact your merchant service provider that set you up with your merchant account. The next section is payment information. So we're going to go ahead and input an amount. I'm going to say $100. And then I want to record my tax into this transaction as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put in $10 for tax. There's also an option here for tax exempt. We're going to leave that at local tax. By clicking out of the tax code, once you've entered it, it will total the amount. So you'll see now that I have $110 for my transaction. The next section is the payment type. E-processing allows you to process multiple types of transactions. Here on this account, you'll see that we have cash and then multi-pay. There's also the ability to accept checks. If you're interested in that, please take a look at your account config section toward the bottom. You'll see information on that or contact your reseller about accepting checks. Multi-pay basically says, you know, I'm going to give you $50 cash and $50 goes onto the card. That section has a video for that and we'll get into more detail in that video. So here we're going to do manual credit card sale. What we're going to do first is go ahead and input our credit card number, then the expiration date. Security code. The security code is the three digit code on the back of the credit card. So I'm going to go ahead and just enter a random number here. Then if you do not have that information, there is under CVV2 type for you to change it to I do not wish to utilize it, cardholder claims that it's not there, and so on. Next, this bottom section is for level two or business cards. If you're not sure about what you're processing, you know, as far as a business card, what you can do is go ahead and put in a date. For example, if you don't have a purchase order or customer code, just use today's date. For this example, it would be 08222013. Order description. Just like above with the line items, you can enter a basic order description. So I'm going to use for this example, lawn care. Once you've got this information, you could go ahead and click on submit transaction. Or if you notice below, email receipt. Now this is a default setting that's going to automatically email the email address on file with eProcessing a copy of the receipt. 
Now there are some online terminal settings that can turn this on and off if you don't want it to send you an email every time. You can do that. For this example, we're going to leave it alone and go ahead and submit our transaction. Now once the transaction has been approved, you'll see this screen that will give you your approval number right here, your response to the address verification system if your zip code was a match address and so on. Next is your CVV2, that three digit code, and its response. As you see here, it's a match. If you want to continue on to process another transaction, you can here, or if you want to print a receipt. Now when you launch the printer receipt, it's going to open up an additional tab in your browser. And it should launch automatically to print the receipt. So all you would have to do is go ahead and click on print. And moving back to our transaction, we had to click back on our originating tab and then you're done. Basically click on process another transaction, it brings you back to the online terminal.